Liverpool looking to claim a winner. Alexander Arnold takes. Oh, it's gone in! He's claiming that one, and Liverpool again show their powers of recovery. And this is why they are looking like champions. And this is why they are feeling like champions. He's with with Jose there at the end. What do you make of his reaction? That's fine. I, I I like him on the touchline. I think he he gives that energy. He wants to show that to his players, the fans in here that uh, that they they love that. They enjoy that. He they relate to that to that. So he's he's very passionate. He's not going to change. No, we've seen we've seen Jersey getting excited as well on, on the touchline, haven't we? Yeah. Well, listen, he he causes drama, doesn't he? Even at the end of matches, you know, we're just hanging on every word. We're hanging on the interviews of, of both men. It's two fantastic characters um, that we've got in the English game, and uh, you know, you wouldn't change Jurgen the way he behaves, and I don't think you change Mourinho. Maybe some people would, but um, you know, it's, it's good it's good drama, isn't it? Roberto, you know, managers in that moment, I often feel sometimes they might go away and think, maybe I wouldn't have done what I did then. Maybe I would have said that a little bit later on. Sometimes with Jose, you feel like if he just took a breath, <laughs> then he might just think about it. But he doesn't, he doesn't care. He, he defends everything he says, doesn't he? Yeah, and I think you could see today that Jose Mourinho knows that they are a serious contender. And I think now the focus is about trying to upset Liverpool and, and that's probably the comments where they go and I think that is a really really interesting battle going forward there's going to there's going to be a lot of twists and turns but you can only think about going to the next fixture in in London now when Liverpool is going to go to to face uh, Spurs we're in for a treat second half of the season hopefully with some crazy. fans back as well, well I, I, but... I agree with Jose in the second half I think his team showed far more intent they got further up the pitch and they I mean they had three big chances Bergwijn had two Harry Kane uh, Harry Kane's header so from that point of view their performance was a lot better in that second half yeah there was so much more intent wasn't there let's have a little look at the chances that Spurs had in the second half and um, it was said in commentary that they might rue them and, and they really will have rued them in the end Roberto and it was similar profile that run in behind Trent um, is almost that Bergwin profile getting into the box and then you expect him just to hit the back of the net and that's the first chance as soon as you come out from from the, the dressing room you expected maybe uh, probably the approach was the Spurs didn't want to play from the back everything was to try to go long quickly again Son with a flick on into the same path in between centre half and Trent and Bergwin there almost hit in the back of the net and those were the two key moments in that second half performance and Jose changed the shape slightly where he puts the Soko back in the middle and the Celso um, in that three just behind uh, behind Harry Kane and and it worked because that caused Liverpool problems and as uh, as we can see here that they were brilliant chances and, and at least one of those should have been in the back of the net that was a massive chance for Harry Kane wasn't it I mean you know you bet you'd never think it's him scoring there but um I think certainly Spurs in the second half came out with a different intent. You know, they were closing people down. They were on the front foot. It was it was much different from the second half. And with those chances, they could have easily won the game. Yeah, Jurgen Klopp was alluding to them being a countering team there, wasn't he, in his interview? And he didn't seem to give much credit for that intent in the second half. He didn't seem to have had that as a prevailing view of the match. But there was certainly a lot more of it. Possession stats were very different for Spurs in the second half. They were. But as you can see here in the images, it looked like that the first 45 minutes, I think Spurs wanted to get through to half time as quick as they could they almost weather the storm and just making it very tight they were really strong in the wide area second half as Alan mentioned Sissoko gets central it's almost that they want to press high and they put a lot of pressure into the, the Liverpool start of play and from there they were so quick and so dynamic every time that they had a chance to go forward you could see the team squeezing really high up and, and it was a different intent it's, it's almost that probably they felt that the first half they weathered the storm and the second half was the real opportunity to go and, and grab the game and, and it was very, uh, in, in that respect, his second half performance is the typical Spurs performance this season away from home. It was a really impressive defensive display from Spurs as well, a real a team effort obviously, uh, but the Firmino goal, that, that, that was the only moment, there seemed to be a bit of confusion there in the box. Yeah, well, there definitely was. I mean, first of all, you need a quality ball in there, which was definitely delivered in there, but then you need someone who is prepared to go and attack the ball and Firmino does that there's the there's a little block off there and that's what Tottenham will complain about and we're complaining about to the uh, to the referee about the block off but that goes on all the time but from a Liverpool point of view the ball in the movement and the way he attacks that ball I mean it isn't it's an amazing header Lloris has just got to admire it and look at it he can't even move he can't dive 
offers a bullet header in the back of the net and the keeper's got no chance. What a header. Third goal of the season for Bobby Firmino. And, you know, when you look at the goals that come from Salah and Mane and, and we're talking about, you know, maybe, maybe being a bit selfish sometimes, their goal scorers. It doesn't matter, does it, when they pop up like that in the key moments and a valuable three points for Liverpool that that could be come the final day of the season. Yeah, that, that, that was a massive goal for, for, for Firmino, I think, there, because, uh, you know, he doesn't score many, maybe, not as many as the others anyway. And, and Jota's come in and put him under a lot of pressure, really. People have been calling, should he be in the team? And... Um, he adds so much to the Liverpool team and obviously with that celebration you could see the, the, the relief and the adrenaline pumping through and it was, it was a great moment for him. It was indeed. Let's hear then from the Liverpool captain. Jordan Henderson is with Gabriel. And make sure that it is Route 66 towards another title. 66 matches they've played here at Anfield consecutively and not lost, which is a phenomenal achievement. But how important is Jordan Henderson? You talked about him before, the engine room with Ronaldo. You know, and again tonight, he was so dominant, so involved in, in, in everything that Liverpool were doing. It has to come through him, and, and he's just, all, all the time, he's there, isn't he? Yeah, I, th I feel like he sets the tempo of how Liverpool play. You know, he gets on the ball, um, he, he's passing sharp, he's wrapping it into feet, he's talking constantly. He's forever covering the, uh, the, the, the full-backs when... When Trent goes forward, he's the reason they, they, they can go forward. His range of passing is fantastic. And um, he really is the heartbeat of this Liverpool team. And I thought he was magnificent again today. I, thought, yeah, I think he typifies everything that Liverpool are. Um, they've got a great attitude, which it starts from him. And they played some fantastic football in that first half. Their one and two touch football, which he was starting. And the way he fizzes the ball into the, uh, into the forwards, into Salah, into Mane. But second half, it wasn't quite working for Liverpool. But what never stopped was, was he never stopped getting around that pitch. He, he never stopped encouraging the engine room in the middle of the park. And it was his attitude, I thought, that sort of dragged Liverpool through in the, uh, in the second half. And this is another player that we saw at, at Sunderland. I think it's been an evolution in his the way that he plays. Uh, look at the way that he's, he's involved. 135 touches. It's almost that gel that any team needs. And it's no wonder why the young players come into this side and they can uh, be themselves and perform. And there's down to a captain that he leads by example and he performs in the manner that he did. He does indeed. Uh, Jordan Henderson, a, another great performance from Liverpool's captain. Uh, let's have a little look back to the first half. Obviously, it was... You mentioned there a, a dominant Liverpool uh, performance in terms of possession, the passing, and it was Salah who popped up uh, with the opening goal for them. Yeah, it was it was the breakthrough they needed. Um, you know, you felt you felt it was coming. It, Liverpool was so sharp. I, I felt in the in, in the first half, and um, they got an element of fortune. The Celso just get done with the with the one two. You know, I'm sure Mourinho Hall will be uh, be looking at that one after the game. But um, it gets cut back to Salah, and it's just a little bit of a little bit of good fortune. But it's more than what Liverpool deserved at that time. Yeah, they, had, they had more possession, they had, uh, and they were troubling uh, Lloris. They were peppering his uh, his goal, and they were getting through. Tottenham's line time and time again but typical Tottenham they never gave up and they came back and, and, and they punished Liverpool with that, with that goal from, from Son but Liverpool were much the better team in that first half Have you learned anything about the title race tonight Roberto? Yes What you've seen? I think we've seen Spurs they got the mentality to, to compete for the title I think with the first half that we saw of Liverpool it, could have, it would have been very easy to give up but look at here they could not get in the counter-attack position from open play when they won the ball but it's from Yuris plays quickly to Lo Celso he drives the ball look at that 3v2 against the centre halves you can see that Son and Harry Kane trying to get outside the centre halves and it's a great ball and from this position is there is no hope there is a real real clinical finish from Son it was a good decision from VAR that's why I think the technology is well used in in these incidents look at that clinical touch yeah, I don't, I don't think Tottenham are going away. I think they'll be there. Uh, I th they'll be hurting tonight, and you can tell that Jose was, uh, was angry with the re result, considering the number of chances that they created in that second half. But I don't think they're going away, and I think they'll have plenty to say in the, uh, in the title race. You talked about the mentality just a bit there. Just get, delve a little bit more into that for us, for the Spurs and mentality. Well, I think there's a big difference between playing well and winning games and winning titles and winning trophies. And to win trophies, you need to have that mentality, that, that situation that sometimes you're going to be the, wor the, the worst side in the game and you're going to find the, the resilience, the mentality to stay in the game and then come up with the quality that you have. And I think we saw that at stages. I think if you're going to lose a game, 
you want to lose it the way that Spurs lost it today. In moments in the first half, they were outplayed because Liverpool, they've won or they are unbeaten in 65 games because they are... 66. Except in, uh, 66 today, yeah. In exceptionally many ways. You cannot stop them at everything. But to go 1-1 one, one at halftime, I think it's down to the mentality and that resilience that Mourinho is, is, is building in the team. And Liverpool, you know, you look at the injuries that they have had this season and the key players who are, even the likes of James Milner, you know, Gomez, obviously Van Dijk out, players who were very much a part of their title winning season and being able to blood the likes of Rhys Williams tonight, having mm. Curtis Jones so instrumental as well. The young players learning so much much in these experiences bodes very well for Jurgen Klopp. Without doubt, uh, Nico Williams, another one to add to that list. Um, you know, they've had, they've had players come in and, uh, and deputise and, and do very, very well. The goalkeeper was a, was a big miss. You know, they, they coped with that. Uh, Kelleher's come in and did, did very well, certainly in the Champions League games. I thought Coach, Coach Jones was magnificent tonight. I think it was the best game I've seen him play in a, in a Liverpool shirt. I thought he was, he was everywhere and Henderson definitely rubbed off on him. So, yeah, there are positives to come out of this injury crisis that they've <laughs> had. Um, but, yeah, they, they, listen, Liverpool are the best team in the league for me and uh, I think they'll, they'll blow teams away here and I think Tottenham Hotspur showed their credentials with, with the, their performance today. It was, an, it was an early test for Liverpool, wasn't it, in that respect, in terms of their mentality and, and their, their kind of winning uh, you know, style of football that they play here, having Spurs, you know actually sitting behind Spurs coming into this one. Yeah, and they, they passed it with flying colours because they didn't have it all their own way. They had to stand up in that uh, in that second half and there were nervy moments for them. And we've mentioned the two young boys and I can mention them again, make no apologies for that because of the two 19-year-olds to come in and perform like they did in, in these circumstances when where they're under pressure, they've got to come in their big boots to fill the, who they're coming in to, uh, to replace. And they never missed anyone tonight. It was, I thought it was a fantastic performance in sticking together in working hard and they'll only get bigger and better for that well it's been a fascinating week so far hasn't it and there were five other matches tonight so here's the best of the action for you and that's what he does and his reaction to spurs and their performance tonight um well they're, they're not going away i mean he didn't want to say in the in the interview there that uh, they're in the title race but I, I believe they are i think with him in charge um it's been, it's been a long, long wait for, for Tottenham to win something. I'm not saying they're going to win the, the league. I think they might just fall short, but uh, they're going to win something soon. OK, let's just uh, break off a second, Peter, because Jurgen Klopp is waiting. Uh, pitch side to have a word with us. Good evening, Jurgen. Congratulations. Uh, an impressive victory in the end. Uh, Roberto Firmino, Bobby Firmino came up there with the goods. You always talk about your team playing right to the final whistle. We saw it again tonight. Yes, that's true. Tonight we saw it. It was not, not in all the games we played so far that we could score late. Today we could do it. I think it was absolutely deserved. It was a, a really good game against the top, top, top side. This is, um, meanwhile, a counter-attacking monster. So you lose one ball and um, it will end up with an 80% probability in your own box. Um, so you have to be really focused, really concentrated. And on the other side, because um, they don't want the ball too much, um, you have to play around them, and you have to, but you have to keep them really busy. And the boys did that really, really well. Um, the, Peter knows that we don't have a lot of time to train, so the, the game against Fulham and this today is, 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 is obviously different. And then, and then um, preparing a game like this, you need a really intelligent group of players and um, a really open-minded group um, to, to, to work on this changes what you need for, for an opponent like Tottenham and it worked out and I really think it was absolutely deserved. Of course they, they scored a goal which is a typical Tottenham counter-attack, great play um, and had two or three more chances. You cannot defend them with the quality they have um, over 95 minutes and um, but we were, I don't know how, what the possession, what the stats say but um, it felt like we have that 70% possession or so and that makes it really tricky um, to, to stay um, concentrated and the boys did and then what a wonderful goal nice cross nice corner and then sensational header from Bobby so all good uh, they had their chances Bergwan had chances Harry Kane had chances are they going to push you all the way this season do you think Spurs I don't know who pushing are we we have to push ourselves the situation is just completely it's really really difficult and Spurs is 100% one of the favorites for it with the quality they have and the way they play so um, in this in this top games, top six games, and they, 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 they are not bothered to sit back and, and go for the counter, which is really difficult to play against. 
against City, they scored an early goal after a smart free kick routine, and then it's really tough um, to break them down. And um, so they will have, they will be there until the end of the season, 100. percent I've got to just ask you about the conversation you had on the final whistle there with Jose Mourinho. He has alluded to the fact that he's treated differently, and uh, he said he spoke to you about <laughs> your behaviour on the touchline. And my English is worse than I, than I thought. He uh, he actually told me. I mean, you know, usually I don't say that, but he's there. Maybe you can uh, next to me. You can ask him. Said I thought he said to me, the better team lost, and nothing about my behaviour on the touchline. So I have no idea what is. Maybe he was just aggrieved with that afterwards. He also said that to us as well. The better team lost tonight. Alan Shearer just wants to come in with a question. Jurgen. Jurgen, congratulations on the three points. I know you've got some very experienced players in your team tonight. But what about the two young boys, Jones and Williams, about their performances tonight? Oh eh? my God. <laughs> uh, outstanding, outstanding. Come on, Reese Williams. It's uh, you can imagine. I mean, it's like the, the nowadays Alan Shearer he played against <laughs> against Harry Kane, and um, he's yeah. so smart, dropping in the right moment. So then, uh, second half they only played long balls on. Um, they avoided actually Reese. They played the long balls direction, Fabinho, and and and, and put. Um, Harry there, and so we had to really to fight for these second balls because Rees is so strong in the air. So, but with the ball as well, he put, played a pass before our first goal. Um, he is the right mix of. He has the right the right amount of confidence. So for a 19-year-old boy, you don't have to explain to other people how it works, but you have to be confident. And but for apart from that, he just kept it simple. Had super challenges, um, but interceptions in in the center when they tried to create a counter attack, he didn't drop too early, so he won these balls. An absolutely incredible game, I have to say. And Curtis, it's Curtis. So <laughs> our boy, thank God. <laughs> Imagine you should say you have to sign him. That's uh, um, he's already here for years and wants to stay. So that's um, a top top class player. Jürgen, how pleased were you with uh, Firmino's goal? Uh, so in two sessions you have, or well, actually only one session, um, a big part of it are set pieces. So um, we had, we were close. We were close with the with the with the set pieces before. We had headers. I think Bobby had a header before. Um, so we we didn't know where. Yeah, now you you you, you analyze them, and it's so nice that Robbo, who is meanwhile even with set pieces as well, his crosses are really outstanding, and Bobby's there. And what a thunderball that was! Um, top top goal. Congratulations, Jürgen. Thank you so much for your time. Welcome. See you. <laughs> so, a different interpretation, as always. Jordan, well done. It, it felt like a heavyweight clash watching it to play in. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a good game. Um, very tactical. Probably what you expected a little bit in terms of we, uh, us dominating with the ball, creating chances and then get done on the counter in the first half. So. We'll be disappointed with that because we knew that was the case. Um, but overall, I thought the performance was outstanding. I thought we dominated for large periods with the ball, created some good chances um, and never never stopped. Kept going right until the end and got got the winner, which I think we deserved. And it's, it's a habit, a regular habit in this incredible home run you've had. Uh, but did, did you sense that it might just have passed you by tonight? Well, we just concentrate on keep going until the whistle goes, you know, we don't think about records of outcomes we're here to win games and we don't stop until the final whistle you know unfortunately at the weekend we didn't manage to find the winner today we did um so i'm i'm delighted with the lads i thought the performance was was outstanding deserved the three points best performance of the season and the mark of champions would you say tonight? i'd say it's one of our best performances of the season i think personally you know with the ball without the ball i thought counter press was really good winning the ball back high up relentless with the pressure so, no, nah, I'm, I'm over the moon, as you can see. Uh, and a word on your centre-back as well, making his Premier League debut tonight, Rhys Williams. Well, I told you before the game he'd been outstanding, and I'd hoped for the same tonight, and he was, he was outstanding again. I thought he was one of the best players in the park, won, every, won more majority of things in the air, defended. I can, talk, I can hear him talking all the time for such a young lad, so delighted for him. Um, but not just him, I thought, look, Fabinho next to him, the whole back four and the whole team, to be honest. And you go back to the top, of course. And, and, and what does it mean as well to, to have done it by beating the team that were top and a, a little dent in their record? Well, again, we just want to focus on ourselves. I know we keep saying this and it might get boring, but we do, we focus on ourselves. And yes, um, it might give them a little dent because we've got the three points. Um, but it's more about us and what we do. 
and we're delighted with the three points and then our focus has got to be now on the weekend which comes quick against Palace who are a very good side as, as you know and got some very good results of late so that'll be a tough test for us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well that win. The champion in, in their stadium and we came here to win and we had the best chances to win and um, the chances of Steven Bergwin are, are great chances just to speak about these two and the way the team was was organized and the way the team surprised them also tactically the team was brilliant so yesterday I was telling how many days of work they have with Jurgen how many days my boys have with with me and today it didn't look that it didn't look a team that is champion and that was uh, European champion and world champion that difference was not on the pitch. So therefore, you would expect the Spurs team to be in the running throughout the season for the no, title, wouldn't you? No, I expect you? the Spurs team in the next match to try to win it again and to do that every every game, that's what I expect. And in the end of the season, we will see where we are. No more than that. But you know these players, and these players were in a Champions League final not so long ago. Most of, the, most of your team... Five. Yeah? Five. Uh, that's the, there's still a lot of experience in that side though isn't there yeah, now five and five you adding them. in your mentality five of them uh, this is a new team with um, a different way of play a different way of sync and uh, we are together for not a long time and to be able to do what we did was fantastic um, of course the result is the most important thing and the result is is awful but the way the team uh, perform i'm happy you had a word with Jurgen Klopp at the end. What were you I saying? told him the best, the best team lost, and um, he disagreed. But uh, that's his opinion. Um, uh, by the way, if uh, if I behave the same way on the touchline like he does, I have no chance to stay there, and I'm out for 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 a minute. In, in what minute sense? After. Because Jurgen was very animated at the end of the first no, come half. Come on, Is that's that... animated. Mm. That's animated. Mm. Or oh, do you want me to take the? Um, you say, the table with the with the time from the fourth official hands to see what happens to me. You say it's overstepping the mark. No, I'm saying that uh, that for some reason I am different. That's the only thing I say, and that's sad. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Was he referring to Pep Guardiola last night? I think with the with the clock. Um, did did he uh, have a point there at all, Alan? In terms of that performance? Well, in, I terms think in, in terms of this incident, in terms of him saying that he's treated differently to other managers? Well, Jürgen does exactly the same on the touchline week in, week out. He, um, we know what he's like. He's, he's very passionate about his team and he's got a few young boys in that team there tonight who he can be very proud of who he wanted to cheer on and push on. and That's what he's doing.